Got you there. Oh! Oh! Okay, okay. What's going on, everybody? My name is Johnny, and welcome to Midnight Evil. Now, you know when you were a little kid, and you, your dad would come in, and you're all tucked in bed, right? You're all tucked in, and you look at your dad, and you go, Daddy, can you read me a bedtime story? Dad would go, yeah, I can, man. And then he'd freaking he'd go there and get, go on your little bookshelf with, like, five books, and they're always, like, these little colorful... Right, you pick one. Well, this game is not it, okay? This is a horror game, all right? It's a horror game. As the clock approached midnight, William Crink Grinkle was fast asleep. What kind of last name was Grinkle? What? The night was a different, though. He woke to a strange sound coming from the attic. Oh, uh, what kind of painting is this? And never go to the attic by yourself, especially if you're like seven. Like, calm down, okay? Let's calm down, Mr. Adventure. As he climbed the stairs, he felt something. It touched his butt cheeks. What the hell? What kind of, what, what's in the box? It's in a box! Is that a box? That's a box, right? Hey, yeah. He have never seen this chest before. What's in there? Ooh, it's a book. Okay. My man took that book, didn't he? Just an innocent book. Nah, it's not innocent, though. Not innocent. Deny his life with chains forever. Okay. Nathan Sanders presents... I'm all about this. This is this is already kind of good. This kind of gave me in the, in the mood. Midnight Evil. All right. My eyes are starting to hurt. Light's not helping. If you guys don't know, I use a light in the, uh, up here, right? And it hits my eyeballs directly. It's, it just freaking, it targets it, and it makes me want to blink. I don't give a fuck. Oh, we're in a little kid's room. We're in a kid's room. What we got going on here? Dr. Schwartz, Schwarzenregen. The Germinator. <laughs> Front to the present. Okay, so these are like movies. Saws. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Okay, can we open this? What's going on? Why can't we do what what, what we gotta do? How do I how do I look at it? Preface. Long before the first humans stood upright and took their place in the world, there was a beautiful land that was ruled by what many would come to call the Fae. Okay, it freaking, it turns purple whenever you read stuff. Okay. These ancient beings were worshipped by mankind, but they were also feared. Humans were right to be afraid, for there were many different creatures that lived in the darkness watching us and waiting. Most were harmless enough, amusing themselves by causing mischief and playing pranks on humans that crossed their paths. However, some had more sinister intentions. The Urking, the Urkling? The Urkling, for example, have developed a liking for the taste of human children. These monsters are small, unnaturally fast, and impossible to kill. These monsters are small, unnaturally fast, and impossible to kill. It was an unlucky tragedy for my people that we decided to build our village here, right in the middle of the Urkling's territory. We have lost so many of our children over this past year. There aren't enough tears in this world to weep for their loss. Ooh, next page. Let's go, baby. Thankfully, though, my grandmother taught me well in the ways of my druid ancestors. I may not be able to kill the little beasts, but I was able to work out a spell that binds them to this book. I can only hide it and pray that it never falls into the hands of a child. If you are reading this, know that I'm truly sorry for the demons I have now been to pass on to you. Opening the book... <gasps> okay, okay. We ain't starting this already. Alright, we ain't starting it. I ain't doing it. Okay, opening the book will have awakened them, and I'm sure they will be ravenously hungry. Once the book is open, you must read it out loud from beginning to end in order to return them to their magical prison. Okay, what was that? What was that? Okay, what was that? Stop it. Okay, be watchful, they only attack if you don't see them coming. Most importantly, once you finish this book, keep it hidden so that no one ever opens it again. Okay. I got an achievement. Cool. W-I-G-S-F-M 98.7 Game Talk. Okay. Hello, darkness. My old friend. My name is Nick Gloom. 
Hello, Nick. It's just me tonight. Hmm? As you guys know, we answer game questions, game questions and talk tips and tricks. Okay. Well, Nate usually does. I don't really play most of those games. Anyway, let's get to the phones. Okay. First caller, you're on the air. Hi, Nick. Hi. I'm wondering, how do I need the final boss in Germinator Destruction? Oh, Germinator Destruction? <laughs> how would I know that? Oh, I don't know. I'm stuck here working for crap money. <laughs> I still can't afford to buy new Atari games. Atari games. <laughs> okay. Would you like me to page Nate? I don't Here's know. the thing. Like I said, I'm working here. I don't usually come on the radio. So, I don't have as much of a bedside manner as Nate does. But it's totally fine. That's kind of rude, I bought huh? the new Obasic book. Uh, which is the programming language for Otori, since I can't afford to buy my own Otori games, and I'm working on my own homebrew game. Okay. The pending title is Evil Midnight. Evil Midnight. Where I'm not sure what you're going to have to do yet, but I think it's going to be a horror game, and it's going to be at nighttime, uh -huh. and it's going to be evil. Gotcha. Basically, you would do something all night, and then you would win. It's kind of like working here. I try to keep my head down all night, but Janet asked me to go on the air. And I'm always getting asked to do stuff. Interesting. The more stuff I get asked to do, the more I get anxious and panic. It's a vicious cycle. Right. Is this some kind of life lesson? No kidding. I just want to play German. You just play games, my guy. Here's the thing. Oh, it just, it just shuts off, huh? Okay. Open this book back up. Chapter 1. Little Maggie O'Brien was the first. The children had been playing in Hogan's forest when they will all heard a noise. Okay. What the heck is that? What was that? Okay. Sensing no danger because there were so many of them, 12 children had all decided to investigate the source of the strange sound. As they all searched high and low, they soon realized that Maggie was missing. Frantically, they began searching for their friend. Stop it. Fucking stop it. I don't like it. Stop. She was a small girl who loved to play hide and seek. Okay, no more, no more stuff. We're gonna. What's that? What's that? What's that mean? What's this mean? What are we freaking. What are we freaking out for? Stop. Quit. Enough. Okay, so we're gonna. I guess we're gonna have to like read stuff and then look. Okay. Her big brother Colin insisted that she was probably hiding somewhere safe and giggling to herself as she watched everyone search for her. Okay. The sun sank low in the sky and the forest grew dark. The children, frustrated and panicked, ran back to the village to alert their parents that little Maggie was nowhere to be found. I just fucking read that perfectly. Why did I not pick it up? The children, frustrated and panicked, ran back to the village to alert their parents that little Maggie was nowhere to be found. Hello? That's when everyone lit torches and spread out through the woods calling her name. Bada bing, baby. It, it, it takes a little bit for to like recognize what I'm trying to say. The little girl's mother sobbed desperately as we all inspected every corner of the woods in hopes of finding her. Her brother kept searching, tears streaming down his cheeks. I'm her big brother, he said, rubbing his eyes. I'm so <gasps> Okay, that's enough. Okay, I'm, so I'm done with it. I'm so done. I'm supposed to make sure nothing happens to her. I'm supposed to make sure nothing happens to her. It's not your fault, Colin. I assured him we'll find her soon and she'll be no worse for the wear. He nodded for us a smile and we all continued looking. The moment I heard him scream, I knew he had found her. Or, rather, what was left of her, which wasn't much. We were sure it was Maggie because she had worn her favorite hair bow that, that day. Her father plucked the pink ribbon from the body and fell to his knees, wailing into the darkness. Poor Colin tried to tell us then. He said that she had been covered in what he described as little green men. Oh my! Oh my god. Okay. Uh, they were fat and green. He stammered. Wait for it. With bright gr nice. growing eyes, they were biting off bits of skin and flesh. No one believed that lad. We all attributed the horrible... Okay. So let's stop it. 
We all att attributed the horrible ordeal to a hungry wild animal. What's that noise? What's that mean? What's this mean? What's this mean? Okay. We all attributed the horrible ordeal to a hungry wild animal. Of course, what else could it be possibly be? Scooping up what remaining... Would you get out of my freaking face? I'm gonna slap you, alright? I'm so mad. Scooping up what remained of little Maggie, the town's folks set to work preparing for her funeral. We had no idea the horrors that lay ahead. Okay. I thought to myself now strange her wounds looked. Get out of here, dude. You ain't nothing, bro. Okay, I couldn't help but think back to what Colin had said about the little green men. It made me think of the stories my grandmother used to tell me. She said she that our druid ancestors spoke of tiny creatures that live long ago in the swamps and marshes surrounding our lands. Their Urkling, she called them. There were three tribes, each being their own breed of evil. Okay. One tribe, I recall, she said, were green and fat. They would lure children away from safety and feast on their flesh. Okay, why are you doing that weird freaking, like, heart attack thingy? They would lure children away from safety and feast on their flesh. Bada bing, baby, let's go. We didn't live near any swamps. Surely the boy's mind was playing tricks on him. Besides, the Urklings weren't real. They couldn't be. There we go. Gosh, man, this thing, it, it doesn't, like, pick my voice up sometimes, even though I'm reading it perfectly fine. All right. So we got the first chapter done, right? I'm hoping. What's going on? Okay, chapter two. Maggie O'Brien's funeral was just what anyone would expect. Stop it. Okay, I'm over you already. Everyone did their best to comfort the grieving's parents. Colin kept to himself. <gasps> it's enough. Everyone assumed it was because he blamed himself. After his sister had been la laid to rest, I came to him to ask him how he was doing. He looked up at me, eyes red from either crying, lack of sleep, or a combination of the two, and said, I really saw them, the little green monsters. Okay. My heart ached as I put my arms around the boy. Hey, my God, it's getting ridiculous. I kept telling myself that seeing his little sister in pieces couldn't have been easy for him. He was just in shock. The stories of the, the Urklings were only told to scare children into doing what they were told that was all. Stop. I heard that. Stop it. Okay, the first thing... Stop it. What was it? Why does it do that? I'm so confused. The first thing my grandmother told me about the Urklings was that there were three tribes. The green ones had round bellies and piercing blue eyes. She said that they, they could be heard if you walk deep in the swamp at night. Okay, next page. They would laugh and sing as they danced around their tiny campfires, which would appear only as tiny as flickering lights through the trees. They were the least lethal of the three tribes, but every bit as evil. They're coming through the freaking windows now! They're outside of my house! The red ones were more temperamental, and even faster than their green cousins. They didn't sing or dance around campfires, and their celeb- Okay. They didn't sing or dance around campfires, and their celebrations were a bit more gruesome. <sighs> Freaking jeez, man. They prefer to eat children from the inside out. Oh! They prefer to eat children from the inside out. It was even thought, my son, that they were only red because they were stained by the blood of their victims. Fiery red, bristle-like hair sprouted from the tops of their heads, and their growing yellow eyes seemed cold and calculating. Okay. All right. All right. The pale Urklings were another class altogether. They had white skin and wild, untamed blue hair that flowed out in every direction. Next page. Okay. The most unsettling thing about them was that they had no eyes at all, yet they somehow were the most keen and efficient killers of the three. Okay. okay so the grandmother said that their long, wiry hair could somehow sense the presence and locations of children. Enough. All right, I can see you, you dummy. I can hear you open the door. There were some things that all three tribes had in common. Urklings preferred to eat after midnight and would only attack if the children didn't make direct eye contact with them. 
Darklings prefer to eat after midnight and would only attack if the child didn't make direct eye contact with him. Urklings prefer to eat after midnight and would only attack if the child didn't make direct eye contact with them. I reassured myself that the O'Brien girl being attacked barely after sunset meant that she had to have been the victim of a wild animal attack. A few of the men in the village came together to hunt down the beast that killed the girl. They came back two days later, carrying the carcass. Oh my Oh my god, dude. They came back to two days later, carrying the carcass of a large wolf. The whole village breathed a sigh of relief and a big celebration was held. Bada bing, son. Last page. The only one besides myself that remained anxious was Colin. Looking at his face that night, I knew that he believed the creature that killed Maggie were still out there waiting. He was right. Okay, next. Chapter 2 is done, baby. We're, we're, we're getting no deaths this freaking gameplay, baby. We're getting no deaths. Let's go. Hello, dark. My old friend. I'm going to do it every freaking time. Welcome to the top of the hour. Again, I'm your host, Nick Gloom, filling in for Nate tonight. That was an interesting hour, I must say. I don't know, Janet. I feel like these kids don't like me. Hey, Janet, How do are you, you like me? A part? And she's walking away. How folks. are you a part of the radio would have no, like, anyway, personality? Colin, you're on the air. Hey, it's just so bland, you know? say that. You suck. I just had a you feeling suck. that that was coming. Well, for sure. I have more... I feel like I'm not uh, as approachable you know? as Nate is. Probably because you have no personality. You said that. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I forgot. There is a sponsor slot I was supposed to fill last hour. Uh-huh. This one goes out to all you greasy, pizza-faced listeners. Thanks. I got a couple of pimples here Are and there, but not that many. Are you tired of popping pimples? You gross. <laughs> Do some zits appear over and over, and you have to keep popping them? Gross. Kind of like that popular video game, Mole Whacker. Pimple From the Whacker. creators of Simple Pimple comes the revolutionary cream, Pimple Buster. The all-in-one, scientifically formulated pimple-destroying cream. Okay. Call 155-PIM. P L E S. Pimples. But hurry before supplies run out. That's one five five. This guy does not -E make me want to buy -E these freaking things at all. He has no you personality, know, Janet, man. I think Evil Midnight could use some old whacker inspiration. Uh -huh. Something to keep the player on their toes. Or at least that last prank caller could drink some of that pimple buster. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna. We're gonna run through chapter three, and then we're gonna call this an episode, because I, I got some stuff I gotta get done. Alright, last chapter here. Chapter three. The next day, Maggie's mother visited her daughter's grave, discovering something that was more than a little strange. The earth in the grave was disturbed as if something had cr crawl... Cl oh, well, that, we'll take it. I, I messed up and it just took it. I couldn't help but remember what grandmother had said about the red earthlings. I couldn't help but remember what grandmother had said about the red Urklings. Okay, that, nothing, no, nothing so far, but we're getting that weird heart beating noise. They would burrow inside their victims and eat their way out. Okay, okay, All right. Could it be that we brought a whole tribe of, of them right to the village without even knowing it? The answer would come soon enough. Okay, it's got to keep checking every once in a while because once they start opening the stuff they can come in jacob mclaren was found torn to shreds in his bed the following morning obviously i see you son you ain't going nowhere obviously a wild animal hadn't attacked him inside his own house okay. another devastating feeling another if you know this soon after maggie didn't sit well with anyone the atmosphere became even more tense and uncomfortable Stop with the freaking noises. I insisted inspecting Jacob's remains myself, just to reassure myself that there was nothing hiding inside. I can hear you, you little green freaking shits, okay? I can hear you. Caller approached me afterwards, asking what I was looking for. I told him it was nothing, but he would... He knew better. Next page, baby. <clears throat> okay. You believe me about this monsters, don't you? You believe me about the monsters, don't you? You believe me about the monsters, don't you? His young face was determined as he spoke. 
You're the only one that doesn't look at me like I'm crazy. Okay. I swallowed hard straight, started to deny it. But the words caught in my throat, and as much as I tried, I couldn't lie. Oh my god, when they get so close like that, it's so freaking scary, dude! Alright. Listen, I put my hands on his shoulders. I don't think you're crazy, but we need to be sure of what we're dealing with before we spark a full-blown panic. Tell me exactly what happened. Colin took a deep breath, working up his nerve. There's red ones now! Enough! Enough! They're starting to get a little bit crazier now. Okay. It was so dark, but I had good torch. Sort of get a little way crazy, dude. Way crazy. I called her name over and over. She didn't answer. Then I heard something. It sounded like chewing. Right? I sounded like chewing. It sounded like chewing. I took a few more steps and saw her laying there. Listen, we're doing this every freaking time. I don't care. All over her were these fat little green monsters. Got you there? Oh! oh! Okay, okay. It's enough, it's enough, it's enough. They had mouthfuls of pointy teeth that looked like needles and massive clawed hands. Just then a twig snapped under my foot and they all stopped what they were doing and looked right at me. That's when I screamed. I see you, stupid. Keep, keep on. I see you. Any more? Oh, right there, huh? You ain't going nowhere. In the window? I don't care. All right, that's when I screamed and they shat and they scattered. Next page. They were gone before any of the grown-ups got to me. His eyes filled with tears at the memory. Please tell me what they are. Okay. He was no more than 11 or 12, having just lost his sister and now his friend. No one had believed him. When he tried to tell us before, it couldn't have been easy. Green one, red one. <laughs> We ain't open that door. <gasps> I see you, stupid. Got here, coach. We're out of here. I, it couldn't have been easy, but he opened up for, to me. I felt it only right that I would tell him what I knew. Okay. We're good. We're good. We sat together by the bonfire late into the night, and I told him all about the old stories. Unfortunately, the one thing that my grandmother hadn't mentioned was how to get rid of them. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. I don't know why I, I don't know why we keep doing that little heartbeat thing. Looking into the flames, I got an idea. I knew that most unholy creatures were repelled by fire. Okay, is there more? I knew that most unholy creatures were repelled by fire. Well, Colin folded his arms. Enough. We will just have to test what happens to an Urkling when it's on fire. Bada bing, chapter 3 is done. Let's freaking go, dude. No deaths out here. I need some water. All the talk is getting me a little bit parched. Alright. Alright, everybody, this was Midnight Evil. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you guys do a YouTube thing, like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. As always, guys, my name is Johnny, and I'll see you guys in the next video for Midnight Evil. Let me know in the comments, and uh, make sure you guys smash that like button. It really does help me know what you guys want and what you guys don't want.